edgy, dark cartoons. It's what separates the weak from the strong, the cowardly from the brave, the church from the government. I think that's a thing. What are you doing watching episodic feel-good sitcoms? Everyone knows the only kind of animation you should be watching past the age of four is dark, edgy, story-driven, lore-extensive cartoons. Or at least as a stigma that's kind of grown around the conversation of animation and the ongoing fight for the medium to be seen on equal levels of any other forms of entertainment. The stigma that we've probably accidentally perpetuate. Yeah, uh, whoops, my bad. But we cannot deny that serialized overarching story animation and darker, edgier themes and moments kind of have gone hand in hand over the last decade of animation. Which brings us to the Owl House, which from the moment it was announced, Announced, it felt like the series would be this culmination of everything that came before it in terms of a dark, serialized story. Being branded from the jump as a horror comedy, taking place in the demon realm. The main setting of the series is a giant, dead corpse. And not to mention, something in the back of nearly everyone's mind when it was first announced was the series' innate ties to Gravity Falls. As alongside Amphibia, it was created by Gravity Falls alumni, which was very telling for both shows, as Gravity Falls was a series that gradually pushed the boundaries of what could be shown on a Disney-owned children's network. Season 1 already had an abundance of moments that made older viewers go, oh wow, they're really doing this, huh? But season 2 went above and beyond. A graphic zombie apocalypse? Bleak possessed mounted animal heads with bleeding eyes. Orphuses being rearranged, it was pretty gnarly stuff. So for the Owl House to blatantly brand itself as a horror comedy, you're going to go into this expecting some pretty horrific stuff. And while season one delivered on the edge, casual dark moments, beheadings, outstanding character design with horrific monsters, the lead antagonist Emperor Bellows being surrounded by the dark arts, showcasing what we can only assume to be necromancy, it's no secret that the overall tone for the first season still leaned more towards the Disney fantasy comedy that we're all used to. Which isn't a bad thing, who does doesn't love to laugh, but it still felt as if it was a bit removed from Dana Terrace's original vision, something she more or less confirmed in the Reddit AMA, asserting season 2 would be darker in tone and closer to her original vision. Which if you look at Dana's wonderful personal art, yeah, I don't think she wants to make a show that's all sunshine and rainbows. So today, I just wanted to briefly explore the avenues of how much darker season 2 could be, and why season 1 wasn't able to be as dark as Dana probably envisioned. Which is something we should immediately tackle, as it has a pretty simple answer. It feels like almost all recent Disney TVA properties, recent meaning in the last decade, often have to comply with the typical Disneyisms, playing it safe and aligning a bit more with what the big wigs want. For example, Matt Brawley touched on how Amphibia Season 1 wasn't able to go into the more mystical elements of the series, so it became something they had to save for later, and you can already feel those things becoming a bit more prevalent in Season 2. With Star vs. the Forces of Evil, Echo Creek High School was something that was more or less encouraged by the executives. You gotta have that school setting, but much like Amphibia, once they got that second season and was able to prove that what they were doing was working, they were able to steer farther away from the high school, before basically abandoning it altogether in seasons 3 and 4. Now, I could very much be wrong, but for obvious reasons, i.e. its initial premise not mentioning a wizard school at all, I feel like Hexide may not have been a part of Dana's original plan, not to speak for her, and if it was, maybe it had a much smaller role. But even when you look at how the series is set up, Luz arrives in the demon realm and becomes a witch's apprentice. The fact that Hexite became so prevalent throughout the first season feels like it could have been a little bit of network interference. You gotta have that relatable high school hook. And while I personally don't think Hexite has weakened the show, it definitely made the first season a bit confusing at times, like, okay, who was Luce really learning from? That being said, Hexite has provided some interesting stories and development, 
like Willow and Amity's former friendship and the mysterious influence of Light Parents hold. But I would not be surprised if Hexide slowly loses its relevance throughout Season 2, in the same vein that Echo Creek High School was slowly phased out of Star vs. the Forces of Evil. While I don't believe they'll ever get rid of Hexide completely, I could see it being used as more of a framing device, like in Agony of a Witch, utilizing the field trips of Hexide to introduce more and more locations of the Boiling Isles. Which, a deeper exploration of the Isles is one of the many things promised for Season 2. But in terms of actual concepts that could be explored in Season 2, this is where I believe the darker themes and concepts will come into play, and how the show can get away with a lot more in the second season. And I feel like the character who will be the main contributor of this will be Emperor Bellows. Now that he's established and out in the open, I doubt he'll make frequent appearances, what modern animation villain does. But whatever screen time he is given in season 2, likely will lean more into his twisted abilities and dark arts. Again, necromancy is nothing to sneeze at, and I'm kind of shocked Disney is actually letting them get away with that. Bellows controlling the remains of all of these dead beasts, assumably titans. And while I'm not sure how far they'll actually show the process of necromancy, like what, are we just gonna see Bellows dig up some corpse out of his closet? That alone is something they can put at the forefront. I feel like we're going to see the Owl House's take on more witchcraft concepts. One concept I'd love to see them tackle is blood rituals, and how that could even factor into performing magic. Though, for the impressionable viewers at home, I doubt they're gonna have Luz pull out a switchblade and cut her hand, dripping blood onto a glyph, but I feel like they already have a clever workaround with the other mythical creatures that inhabit the Boiling Isles. Now I can't say I want Lucius going up and cutting up monsters, using purple or blue blood or whatever the case may be to enhance her magic. In fact, with an audience in mind, I don't know if they'll have a protagonist do that at all, but they have already shown us a workaround with the Palisman, Bellows extracting liquid magic from a broken Palisman. Basically, it's blood, and although he utilized that for his own rejuvenation, one would imagine there's other applications for the substance. There are also the backstories of King and Hootie, which have also been teased to be explored in Season 2. Hootie's backstory I completely expect to be twisted and fucked up, but as the show progresses, there have been more and more suspicions that King has a relation to the Titans. And, in exploring that, we naturally would get some sort of exploration of genocide. Which I'm not sure is something that's been explored in recent Disney properties, but with their expansive library, I'm sure I could have missed something. Still, I imagine it would be more at the forefront here. I also have no doubts that the Day of Unity involves sacrifice. Straight up human or witch sacrifice. Going off Emperor Bellus' implications in Agony of a Witch and Youngblood Old Souls. You heard those shrieks. And while I doubt a relevant character would be sacrificed, they can definitely end up in that position, but be rescued, I wouldn't put it past the Owl House for a one-off side character to be sacrificed. Just a random no-name incidental. Ideally with a purpose, but hey, if they're just trying to make a point, I'm down for it. Ultimately, I feel like all Disney shows do progress into darker territory as they go on, but I feel like the Owl House is in a position where it could really take the cake. And I feel like this is really evident in the various concept art for the series. In WoW development art, alongside any side sketches of of Dana's don't necessarily overrule the canon, I feel like they still give us a peek in what the show's true atmosphere wants to be. I mean hell, it seems as if for the longest time, Luz's weapon was going to be a baseball bat with glyphs on it. And while I still expect a recontextualization of that weapon, it's not hard to see why Disney wouldn't have been down with that. It's super easy for a kid to grab a baseball bat, draw glyphs, slap them on, and before you know it there's a lawsuit. But with a darker atmosphere in season 2, I would expect crazier, spookier designs signs more intense, darker moments that would leave a kid's jaw dropped, and as one would assume, much higher stakes. If there's any show that would have an impactful, brutal death that impacts the narrative, it would be The Owl House. So I cannot wait for season 2 to actually roll around next year, and show what in this video could actually be spot on, and what couldn't be further from the truth. But as always, these are just my thoughts, and I want to hear yours. What do you think? How do you believe The Owl House season 2 can triumph season 1 in tone? What gritty dark moments do you expect to become more prevalent? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below or tweet your thoughts at Roundtable Vids. And for more of my own thoughts, you can find me at Dr. Thoughts. We're also on Instagram. Help Roundtable grow by either becoming a member of this channel or supporting us over at Patreon. Link in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please join a like and subscribe to the Roundtable for more great cartoon content. Thank you for watching and I hope you have an awesome day. Ultra Fox, signing out.